Hello everyone! In this video, I will show you how you can make a complete CRUD web application on top of Google Sheets without any coding. You will be able to build multiple apps on your own by editing the app settings and schemas. It also features file upload, dynamic dropdown, dependent fields, and computed fields. Dependent fields and computed fields will require minor coding, but that can be done very easily. So let's start. When you open it, you will see multiple app sections to perform create, read, update, and delete operation targeting different sheets. You can search your record. You can create a new record by clicking this Add New Item button. Here, you can see I have opened the Projects tab in Google Sheets. It contains fields like project name, project category, deadline date, status, approval, priority, and assigned user. Based on these records, I have built a CRUD application that you can see here. It's displaying all the projects in a nice table along with nice and rich formatting. You can also do the sorting, searching, and filtering. You can very easily create a new record by clicking on this button called New Item. This will open up the form. Let me fill this form. Click on Save. You can see our new record has appeared here on the top. Now to edit this record click on this pencil icon. This will open up the pre-populated form. You can edit this form and hit save to save your changes. Here you can see this row got updated. To delete it, click the trash icon. This will ask for your permission to delete it. Allow to finally delete it. And here you can see our record has been deleted successfully. You can also sort your records by any field you like to. Let me show you that as well. Here I am sorting it by deadline date, by priority and so on. You can very easily filter or search through your records. Let me show that to you. Let's search for Project G. Let's show only pending projects. So it's filtering the records nicely. Let me give you another demo with file uploading, dynamic dropdown, dependent fields, and computed fields. This is the product list, or you can say rate sheet. This list will be used in sales form to enter the product and its rate. This is the form to create a new product. We can upload an image like this. Hit the Submit button. And our record has been created successfully. You can view the created record like this. Let me show you the uploaded file and its location. Here is our uploaded image. The script will automatically create a folder inside the parent folder containing the spreadsheet. Now let's move to the Sales tab. Here we can pull product rates like this. Notice, when we select the product, the rate field also gets updated. And when we enter quantity, it calculates the amount field too. This demonstrates dependent fields and computed fields, and the product dropdown can be updated easily using the products tab there by making the dropdown dynamic. Now hit the save button. 
and you can see the newly created record. You can view your record by clicking this view icon. If you are liking the video, then please take a moment to like and subscribe. Moving on. Let's talk about how to do configuration. Here, I have a table with one ID column. This ID column is necessary in order to perform CRUD operations. You can name this column anything. Next, you need to have a schema that will dictate how the table should get displayed, and it will also be responsible for constructing the form. The sheet containing the schema can be named anything. You can simply make a copy of this sheet and customize the fields to suit your needs. Do not change the text in the header. The entries in the key column should exactly match with the header in the record tab. To ensure this, you can pull your header fields using this formula. You can edit the labels for the corresponding keys here. This is how it will appear in the table and in the form also. In the Type column, you can select from the available choices like Text, Date, Time, Number, Number Currency, Text Area, Select, Radio and Checkbox, File, File Image, Link. Required column is used to set if the fields are mandatory. You can put false against the non-mandatory fields. You can provide options for input fields like Select, Radio, Checkbox in this options column. It should contain items separated by comma. You can also pull options from different sheets. Like here, I have pulled project categories from the drop-downs tab. I have used the join function to make it a comma separated list. You can also use another record as a drop-down source. For example, I have used the products table as a drop-down source in the sales form. For that, you need to set the type as select option source and enter the sheet name and key name in this fashion. Here the source is the sheet name and key is this item field name. If you want to pull options from a record like products, if you want to sort your records based on certain fields, then you can set its value to true in this sortable column. For the alignment of text in a particular column, you can choose from three values, start, center, and end. End is suitable mostly for price or amount. Start is suitable for plain text and descriptions. For number types, you can also set its maximum and minimum values. You can also hide certain columns in a table view or disable fields in a form that needs to be computed or that depends on other fields. Once your schema is ready, Move to the App Setting tab. Do not change the name of this tab as it is hard-coded in the scripts. Here you can list different apps. Provide the app name here. You can also choose your locale and set currency. This will be required for formatting dates, price, and amount in the table. You can also change the data entry sheet and schema sheet. So it allows you to have multiple data entry sheets in the same spreadsheet and hook them with your web application at ease. If your table has an ID column named different than hash, then you can alter that here. This Refresh Sheet List button is meant to refresh these dropdowns containing sheet names. Click Refresh Sheet List to update the dropdown with any newly added sheets. Once again, don't forget to choose the data entry and schema sheets and specify the ID column as this is crucial for the application to work properly. If you notice here, you can see nice formatting in the rating column using stars. And in these columns also, you can see some nice formatting for status and approval columns. So you might be thinking how you can have those formatting styles in your case. For that, I have kept a few key names reserved for the application so that when you use them in your schema, it gets picked up by the application code to format it the way you have just seen. Let me show you in more detail what I mean by that. Here in this schema, if you use rating as a key name for some sort of performance field, then it will automatically be formatted as stars. 
I have provided the detailed instructions here in this comment. You can read it later. By making the most of these features, you can seamlessly customize and adapt the application to meet your specific needs. Remember to save the settings after any adjustments to make sure they take effect. Now the most important part is how do you make this yours? So first of all, make a copy of this spreadsheet. You can get it by visiting the purchase link. I have kept the price very affordable. I will try to publish such paid content as minimum as possible. Your support is highly appreciated. Once you have opened the spreadsheet, then click on Extensions and then App Script. Now click on Deploy and then choose New Deployment. Select Web App as Deployment Type. Give it a name like Version 1. In Execute As dropdown select me. In Who Has Access dropdown choose only myself. Then click on Deploy. It will then ask to authorize the code. Go ahead and grant all the permission. It will take some time and then you will get the app URL. Now go ahead and open the URL. Then you also need to save app settings. And refresh the app again. Here you got your application. Let me show you where to modify the code for computed fields and dependent fields. Here in this file named Compute Mixin, you need to modify these functions. For example, when a product is selected, this handle select change method is called. Here we provide an app name, which is sales in this case. Then we find the selected product like this. Then we retrieve its rate and assign it to the rate field. Similarly, you can modify this calculate block to have auto-computed fields. If you desire an even more customized version, then please contact me using my email. I will try to provide that at an affordable price. If you liked the video, then please hit the like button, and please subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.